Okay, a oh, very good morning all of you. So today's live session will focus on a case-based question. So I'll present you with a case and then we'll have a related discussion pertaining to that case. I hope it is streaming fine. If you have any issues, do let me know in the comment section. So hope you have all had a wonderful sleep, uh, amazing sleep last night. So let's start up our session now, right? So first and foremost, we'll go through the particular case and then we'll see what we can deduce from the same, right? So a mother brings her 10 year old daughter for examination as she noticed brown macules on her daughter's legs. And please make a note that the macules, the so-called macules or discoloration are having jagged or irregular outline. The mother is worried that her daughter may have a malignancy and after evaluation, macules are identified as scaphoid spots. Now, let's go through the questions. I hope you've got the context now. Let's proceed with our first question. Scaphoid spots are seen due to increased proliferation of which of the following? Keratinocytes, squamous cells, melanocytes, lymphocytes. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? So we are talking about scaphoid spots. So why do you see these scaphoid spots at the histologic level? They are seen due to increased proliferation of which of the following? Keratinocytes, squamous cells, melanocytes, lymphocytes. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? Isn't this obvious? Wonderful. So melanocytes. So can you be more specific? Like where are these melanocytes present? So as you rightly mentioned, it's because of increased you know proliferation of melanocytes, especially in the basal layer of epidermis, increased melanin formation. Wonderful. By the way, I'll show you the images of capillary spots. Don't worry, I'll show it in the next question. Good. Exactly, in the basal layer of epidermis, do make a note of this point, right? Now, moving on to the next question, capillate spots with irregular outlines are evident in which of the following conditions? Option A, neurofibromatosis. Option B, fibrous dysplasia. Option C, both. Option D, none. So which one do you think is more appropriate? Capillate spots with irregular outline. So that's what we mentioned even in the question itself, in the case itself. So mother has examined jagged, jagged outline or irregular outline discolorations, which is or which could be a feature of which of the following conditions. So is it both? Uh, okay, some of you say A, B, C, so very good, all options covered except D. So which one do you think? It's not both. So which one do you think is answer now? It's not C, it's not D. So I'm on A and B, which one do you think is the answer? I'm helping you out. Okay, now we see two schools of thought. Some say A, some say B. Okay, well done. Remember and consider this very, very important. The cafeloid spots they have irregular outline or jagged outline in case of fibrous dysplasia. Whereas in case of neurofibromatosis, the outline is smooth or regular, right? Consider this very, very important. I'll show you an image of the same, okay? So I hope you can see. So let me increase the brightness. Yeah. So you can see irregular outline. So this is scaphoid pigmentation of skin. You can see brownish discoloration. It's not raised. So it's a macule. And carefully observe the outline. It's irregular or jagged. Isn't it? Wonderful. So scaphoid spots with irregular outline are evident in fibrous dysplasia. Whereas they are regular in case of neurofibromatosis, consider this very, very important. Now, there is another feature which helps us in differentiating fibrous dysplasia and neurofibromatosis apart from the outline of cafeloid spots, that is 
presence of skin pigmentation on ipsilateral side of bony lesions, which is true in case of polyostotic fibrous dysplasia. So using these two features, you can differentiate fibrous dysplasia with that of neurofibromatosis. Do make a note of this point, right? I hope it's clear. Okay, well tried. Well tried. Now let's move on to the next question. Catholic spots are seen in conjunction with polyostotic fibrous dysplasia and endocrine abnormalities in which condition? Now let me give you a hint, in which syndrome? So the following syndrome has a combination of skin pigmentation, that is scapulate spots, in conjunction with polyostotic fibrous dysplasia and endocrinopathies, precocious puberty. So now you know the answer for sure. Wonderful. So the severe form of fibrous dysplasia, McEwen Albright syndrome, we also have Jaffe's type, which is not severe form, and we have severe form, which is McEwen Albright syndrome. So McEwen Albright syndrome, you have skin pigmentation, as we have discussed, capillary pigmentation, along with polyostotic fibrous dysplasia and endocrine abnormalities. McEwen Albright syndrome, we'll discuss about this at length, including the gene which is implicated in this condition very soon. Okay. So it is McEwen Albright syndrome. Right? Now, moving on to the next question, a radiographic uh, or radiology related question pertaining to this case. The patient's radiograph is described as having the following characteristic appearance. So bubble, cotton wool, silk wool, starry sky appearance. So which among them is more appropriate? So patient has the following condition. So as we discussed, so what would be the most probable radiographic appearance? The patient's radiograph is described as having the following characteristic appearance. Are you sure it's cotton wool? It's a soup question, so be careful. <laughs> okay, it's not cotton wool, it's not starry sky, it's not silk wool. There's nothing like silk wool, it's just made up. Uh, it's not a soap bubble, it's ground glass appearance, as few of you rightly mentioned. I think Rhea has rightly mentioned the same. Good, Rahul. Ground glass appearance. So why do you have this ground glass appearance? So let's go to the reason. As you know, in case of fibrous dysplasia, the medullary bone is replaced by fibrous tissue. We'll discuss why. So because of this replacement uh, with fibrous tissue, this appears radiolucent in radiograph. Hence it has characteristic ground glass appearance. So it's none. ground glass is the more appropriate answer. So I'll show you the related radiograph so that it will be easy for you to remember the same. So here you go. So it's an occlusal radiograph, ground glass appearance. I mean when you compare this with normal radiograph you can make it out easily, okay? So this is all ground glass appearance. I hope it's clear. Right, now let's move on to the next question. A question related to histologic aspect. We've seen the radial class aspect, the diagnostic part, the synonyms. Let's look into the histologic aspect. A bone biopsy was taken from the patient. Which of the following is most likely to be observed under microscope? Fibrous tissue, giant cells, pleomorphic cells, inflammatory, Infiltrate. In fact, I've given you the answer in the prior question itself. Let's see how many of you are attentive. I'm sure you just woke up. I'm sure you're still in your bed. I'm sure you haven't brushed your teeth yet. I'm sure I'm right. Okay, just kidding. So a bone biopsy was taken from the patient. Which of the following is most likely to be observed in the patient? Isn't that obvious? So as we discussed, there is fibrous medullary tissue, there is a replacement of medullary bone with fibrous tissue. 
So let me show you another image related to the same, the histologic image for better understanding. So you can see a dense collagenous fibrous tissue. So as given in Schaeffer's and I quote, the trabecula of woven bone contain fluid filled cysts that are embedded largely in collagenous fibrous matrix, contributing to a generalized hazy appearance of bone. Okay. So whenever you're going through any features, see to that, you're correlating the theory with the images. It can be clinical, it can be radiographic or it can be histologic. Okay. So as you, as you rightly mentioned, it is, yeah, <laughs> okay, fibrous tissue, good. Now, moving on to the penultimate question. This is quite challenging, purely memory based. Let's see how many of you can answer. The association of fibrous dysplasia and intramuscular myxoma is called, that's it, it's a blank. So let me know if you know the answer. The association of fibrous dysplasia with intramuscular myxoma is called as you know uh, when you eat bread drink maza along with it it's a wonderful feeling maza and bread maza brock so remember in whichever way it's convenient for you wonderful good jarayas rahi so any wonderful Maja Brown syndrome. Wonderful. Maja Brown syndrome, it's a combination of or association of fibrous dysplasia and intramuscular myxoma. So in Maja Brown syndrome, there is greater chance of sarcomatous transformation in fibrous dysplasia. Consider this very, very important, okay? Yeah. Now, let's move on to the final equation, which we often see at least once in every, uh, at least one equation in every entrance, the gene which is implicated in fibrous dysplasia. So, which gene is implicated in this fibrous dysplasia? FGFR3? <laughs> no. Well tried. It's good that some of you are giving spontaneous answers, especially these pure memory-based questions. Well done. Exactly. GNAS1 gene. So can you even expand? Don't Google it. Don't search elsewhere. Based on your memory and recollection ability, can you expand what GNAS1 is? Wonderful. It's GNAS1. By the way, uh, since I've prepared, I've come prepared to this session, even I could remember, or else it's a challenge to remember the entire uh, you know, acronym or abbreviation. Yeah, GN is guanine nucleotide binding protein. AS is alpha stimulating activity polypeptide one. Don't worry even if you don't know the uh, entire form, but at least get familiarized with it. Okay, get familiarized. Even if you don't remember, it's absolutely fine. So guanine nucleotide binding protein, alpha stimulating activity polypeptide 1. So in case of fibrous dysplasia, there is mutation in GNAS1 gene. Because of this mutation, a G protein is produced or formed from this particular gene. So there is excess production of this protein, excess production of related cyclic AMP, CAMP, leading to excess stimulation of involved or implicated endocrine glands. That's the reason why we see you know, excessive production of cortisol, growth hormone, uh, hyperthyroidism, precocious puberty, etc. That's the reason why we said endocrinopathies, right? So this is the uh, etiopathogenesis behind fibrous dysplasia. So the gene which is implicated is GNAS1. There is mutation in the gene leading to this uh, fibrous dysplasia. Also remember it's not hereditary. It's mentioned that it's not hereditary. Okay? I hope it's clear. Yeah, of course it's too much. <laughs> but 
and uh, you know sometimes too much is so much we, have, we need to remember okay uh, so it's up to you whether you remember it or not but at least you get familiarized with this thing and by the way since i have come prepared even i could remember all or else it's not so easy to remember such things and even it's not necessary as well but get familiarized okay there is a difference now so before i conclude let me just sum up all the content which we discussed in 2 to 3 minutes and then we'll conclude our discussion okay right so we have seen that a mother has brought a 10 year old also remember fabulous dysplasia is group 3 to 15 years okay just keep that in mind brings a 10 year old daughter for examination as she notices some discoloration they are not raised they have a regular border and on uh, further evaluation it's identified as scaphoid spots so scaphoid spots are seen due to increased proliferation of melanocytes melanin production in basal layer of epidermis and these scaphoid spots with irregular outline are seen or features of fibrous dysplasia regular outline in case of neurofibromatosis another differentiating point is that in case of fibrous dysplasia the skin pigmentation that is scaphoid spots are seen ipsilateral in a bony lesion so in which side you have bony lesions that side you find skin pigmentation so another differentiating feature also we discussed about vacuum albright syndrome which is a combination of skin pigmentation scaphoid spots you know endocrinopathies and polyosteotic fibrous dysplasia and radiographic appearance is ground glass you know the reason and also biopsy we find fibrous tissue dense collagenous fibrous tissue right the om bone you have discussed that the medullary bone is replaced by fibrous tissue which has this radiolucent interference and it's basically fibrous metaplasia also association of fibrous dysplasia and intramuscular myxoma is major brow syndrome as you all rightly mentioned and this fibrous dysplasia the gene which is implicated is GNAS1 gene so let's go again gonine nucleotide binding protein alpha stimulating polypeptide okay I hope I got it right. Alpha stimulating activity polypeptide. So, I think we should have a wrap on all the genes so that it will be easy for us to remember. I'll see what I can do. Right? Hi, guy three. Yeah, we're just talking about wraps. Uh, in fact, I enjoy doing uh, silly things, especially like those wraps. They're not at all professional. So let's see what I can do. To provide you uh, certain difficult aspects in a simplified and fun way right so i hope it's clear if you have any questions you can always get back to me 24 by 7 so let's wrap it up it's been around 20 25 minutes right <laughs> okay guys right take care we'll see you again tomorrow at 10 30 a.m indian standard time consider these as your regular classes okay at least till the lockdown so we'll see you again tomorrow at 10 30 a.m indian standard time anyways i leave an update okay so wish you all the best love you all have a wonderful day make maximum use of the available time and give your best each and every moment this lockdown is not a punishment it's an opportunity for each and every one of us to give our best isn't it so wish you all the best love you all and for any further assistance you can always get back through mail 24 by 7 take care